welcome in today's video today we are continuing with another frame for which we have to determine the inflection points and without any further ado let's read today's task description where basically we have a frame which is pinned at uh, point a and at point uh, c with the given dimensions of h and uh, l so this time the frame is a bit different as now uh, it has uh, two concentrated loads acting on the vertical and uh, horizontal members where we have load P acting at distance L over 2 from support C and then we have the load F acting at distance H over 2 from support A to use force method to determine the location of the inflection points and now here we are expecting two inflection points and we need to account only for bending. So the contributions from axial and shear force can be neglected while solving with the force method. So without any further ado, let's let's continue with the description of the hand calculation. So uh, as we did uh, on the previous exercises, the first step of business is to determine the degree of indeterminacy. And we have uh, four uh, unknowns or four support reactions. Uh, coming from the both uh, pin supports and we already know that we have three equilibrium equations and basically this is going to lead us to a degree of indeterminacy of the structure equal to one and next we are going to determine which is going to be our redundant and we are going uh, to do it in this way for this example where k0 is going to consist of the uh, original frame with uh, the loads as well but only with a difference that now we are setting a release uh, for the horizontal action at point c and then we're going to have case one and we're going to apply a one unit load here a place where we released uh, that constraint so next we continue to solve uh, for case zero as now the frame is going to be statically determined we are just going to use the equilibrium equations in order for us to determine the support reactions and the bending moment uh, functions uh, for the frame as well so the first uh, step is to take sum of moments uh, at point a equal to zero and then we can determine the value of c0 parametrically and then we just take sum of forces on y equal to zero and this is going to lead that a0 is going to have the following value parametrically and last by taking sum of forces on x equal to zero we are going to obtain the value of a01 as shown here next let's continue to determine the bending moment functions and i decided to take the cut uh, from this side and uh, this distance from here to here is marked as x and now if we take uh, sum of moments at the cut equal to zero we're going to have this uh, mz minus m0 minus because it's rotating clockwise again minus f which was the value of this support reaction times the distance x and this is going to be the bending moment functions for the given boundary so basically it's going to be linear next we continue to take the cut section onto the other discontinuity which is right a bit after the location where force f is located i decided uh, to mark this distance as x and we already know this distance h over 2 and by taking uh, sum of moments at the cut equal to zero we are going to obtain the following bending moment functions for uh, this uh, distance here next we continue for the horizontal number where we have to do basically the same thing we just mark this x and we take sum of moments uh, at the cut equal to zero and then we determine the bending moment uh, functions for the given boundary same thing applies as before continuing with the other discontinuity where we take sum of bending moments equal to zero and then we determine the bending moment uh, function so one thing to be noticed here is that we are going to have uh, quite long uh, bending moment uh, functions and are like quite complicated to solve by hand so i would suggest that when it comes to this type of uh, problems it's uh, better and safe to use some kind of software to solve but although it's not impossible to do it uh, by hand but personally i would prefer to do it with a software next let's continue to solve for case one where we're going to apply that uh, unit uh, load where we released and basically by using the equilibrium equations again we can determine uh, the value of the support reaction as shown here we take some of bending moments at point a equal to zero in order for us to determine the value of c1 then we take sum of forces on y and then we determine a10 and if we take sum of forces on x equal to zero we are going to be able to obtain the value of a11 the next step to be done is exactly the same where we have to determine the bending moment uh, functions 
by taking cuts at the point where we have discontinuities and for this time is going to be quite simple we don't have uh, many discontinuities we're basically we're going to have just uh, two bending moment uh, functions so this is going to be the first one the first cut to obtain the first bending moment functions for the given boundary here and the same thing for the other part of the structure where we are going to obtain these uh, bending moment functions for the given boundary next it's better to make a summary of results where we are going to have all the bending moments coming from each of the case and their respective boundaries this way of writing is going to help you a lot uh, to not make any mistakes so basically you can avoid uh, using the wrong uh, moment functions while solving uh, for the unknowns so next we continue to apply the force method as shown here and then applying the compatibility we are going to be able to find that the redundant is going to be as follows and next we just have to evaluate these uh, two uh, announce by using the integrals in order to obtain their values and find the redundant which is going to be the horizontal support reaction at point C. So now we calculate uh, C10 by taking the integral as shown here. So basically we just input all the values or the bending moment functions which we uh, found uh, parametrically into the integrals and one must be really careful to apply the boundaries as they uh, are and that's why this uh, summary table is uh, quite uh, useful as it shows also the boundary conditions and for one it's quite easy just to apply for example when we have to find uh, xe10 where we are going to have m0 times m1 they are just going to apply them uh, across each other and avoiding any mistakes uh, we are going to have the following uh, integral and as you can see this is quite long and quite hard to do it by hand so i went with the use of mathcad and I obtained that the value of uh, xe10 is going to be as shown here parametrically next we can continue to calculate in the same manner xe11 we're just we're going to use the bending moment functions coming from case uh, one as shown here and then this is going to be the evaluation of the integral and now we have all the ingredients and in that way we can determine the value of our redundant by just taking the rubber and do not forget the minus sign here and lastly we are going to obtain that this is going to be the value of our redundant or basically the support uh, horizontal support reaction at point c parametrically as mentioned at the beginning of the video we are expecting to have inflection points on both of the members and based on the cuts that uh, we will do we are going to find the value of horizontal support reaction at a as uh, follows so same is going to apply for the vertical reaction at uh, c where we are going to have this uh, equation by applying the force method and by just uh, using everything that we know we are going to able to obtain the value of uh, ax and one must be really careful to take the values uh, corresponding to each of the case so a01 is coming from case zero which is going to be this one f and same and same thing uh, applies uh, for the other support reactions next we just determine by using the force uh, method as we have now all the ingredients the value of cy parametrically where we just take these values of c0 and c1 and we just input them here to obtain that this is going to be the value of cy parametrically and now if one was to locate uh, the place where we have the inflection point we just need to take the cut section on our point of interest and then we can determine uh, the inflection point location by just equaling that equation by uh, zero so uh, I took this uh, cut section and marked this as x1 so basically we are just going to have minus uh, if we take some of bending moment at the cut we're going to have minus mx and then we're going to have this minus a01 which is going to be this whole thing here times this uh, x1 distance there is a typo here this should be x1 and then if we just uh, solve this uh, equation equal to zero so basically mx equal to zero we are going to obtain the value of inflection point parametrically this is going to be this one and this is going to be for member a 
c in the end of this video i will substitute some values uh, to get an understanding and compare with the uh, final element software for which in the next video we are going to show you how you can uh, model this type of question as well next we do the same thing for the other member we take uh, the sum of any moments at the cut we now have everything and just by solving mx equal to zero in mathcad we are going to get the following parametrical value for the uh, inflection point for member bc let's assume some values so we can have some understanding as these formulas are like quite parametric and quite hard uh, to think of and let's say that the value of force p is 20 kilonewtons we have force f 15 kilonewtons we have distance l 3 meters we have h at 4 meters and if we input these values into our equations x1 and x2 the x1 we are going to get the distance 2.91 meters and x2 is going to be 2.22 meters and keep in mind that the whole length was 3 meters and if we subtract this 3 minus 2.22 we are going to get that this is going to be at 0 0.82 meters starting from the left going to the right but this is uh, 2.22 meters is going from right to the left of member bc next if we check the results with the finite element software we have all the loads applied correctly and for the first member this is the direction where the software is showing the inflection point so this is the base point here at the subboard and as you can see here it's located at 2.91 meters which is exactly the value which we get by hand calculations next uh, the software for the other member is showing the inflection point from this base point going to the right from left to the right but uh, in our case uh, we took the cut section as thinking from this point going to the left and therefore this is the value which we obtain 2.22 uh, if we subtract the whole length of the beam 3 meters we're going to get the same result as after which is going to be at x equal to 0 0.82 the bending moment which is sine so this concludes today's video i really hope you enjoyed today's video if there is any questions please leave them down in the comment section below and do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you very much see you on the next video